looking back over the beginning of Lent until now, I had two good friends die. I've uh, been sick. Had my car into the shop, and my car needed four new tires. I've had workmen in the house replacing kitchen cabinet doors, which were not complete yet because they hadn't measured properly. Uh, two sons had three surgeries. I yesterday was in the day in Wilmington, Delaware, celebrating an 80th birthday to the oldest of our generation. Plus the normal things I do as a deacon out in the world, in the diocese, and in the parish. All this does not even come close to what the disciples, and Thomas in particular, went through just between Palm Sunday and the day after Easter. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Think about when we mourn a loved one's death. Spouse, child, a very close friend. We are in a state of free fall. Our heart reaching out toward what we have seemingly lost, but cannot help loving anyway. We discover that real love hurts. Real love makes us totally vulnerable and open. Real love will take us far beyond ourselves. Real love can and will devastate us. So, Thomas, how are you feeling? Oh my God! I have seen my Jesus, my teacher, my friend, my hope, my salvation mocked and spit upon, whipped and dragged through the streets and crucified. And to this I think the temple and Roman authorities will come after my hide as well. And, and, and I refer to Jesus' time his death. Oh, no, women and John stayed weeping and praying at the base of his cross. Judas betrayed my Jesus to the temple authorities, and then he committed suicide. Judas was my friend. He was one of us. Peter even denied he knew knowing Jesus during his trial. Why Jesus is dead? Why Jesus is gone? I'm alone. I'm empty. I'm afraid. And then some of our women, some of they saw Jesus raised from the dead when they went to his tomb yesterday to complete the burial rites. Some of my friends told me they met him too. Oh my God. Mourning is indeed a brutal form of emptiness. Help me. I'm locked in fear. I'm alone. I'm empty. Jesus? Jesus! My Lord and my God, are you opening your robes so that I, Thomas, can put my hand <coughs> in your pierced side and place my fingers in your nail prints? Oh Lord, my God, you're not taking me to task, but you're loving me. Would you just help me to remain open to your presence? Help me discover that your mysterious something does indeed reach back to comfort me. Oh, the tendrils of my grief are trailing out <clears throat> into the unknown, searching to be entwined in your greater love that holds me and all things together. Jesus, you are my Christ, God's chosen one, 
I'm trying to believe. I want life in the name. Help me. I believe in order to understand. When we mourn, we touch directly the substance of divine, divine compassion. And just as ice must melt before it can flow, we too must become liquid before we can flow into the larger mind to embrace God and the community. Tears are the classic indicator. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. You folks are my community. This is the place I come when I mourn. I come here to cry. I need us to be together each week. You and I are the essential personnel in my life and in God's kingdom. I'm not here to make God happy or to learn some sound model or even to learn essentials of Christian faith, although that does have to happen, hopefully. I gather here each week so that I may encounter the risen Christ. Or better, be encountered by the risen Christ one more time and be caught up in God's grace that I may experience God's abundant life. I come to touch Jesus' wounds, and I come to be touched by Jesus in the bread and the wine. Jesus' body broken for me. I hope you do too. Thomas' morning and Jesus' response allows us all to touch directly the substance of divine compassion. Thomas's grief melted and became liquid and flowed into the larger mind of Christ. We come together because the life of faith can be joyous and wonderful, and it also frequently is, can be rather challenging. The loss of a loved one, the end of a relationship, the ability to, inability to find a job, to get into the proper school, the persistent ache of loneliness, or a prolonged bout of illness, a pervasive sense of anxiety about our larger community, our country, and the world, all these things can wear us down. And at these times, our faith can be of great strength. And I need my community to keep me strengthened. Because my faith can become a cavalry of all these assaults. So we come together to hear the stories of Jesus, read and interpreted, so we might hear Jesus speaking to us, and in turn might have renewed faith and hope and confidence. Have you believed because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Thank you, Lord Thomas. Thomas's lack of believing is more of a blessing to all of us who come after Thomas. We believe without seeing. We take that leap of faith to believe in order to understand. And we have to support each other in that leap. My friend and fellow deacon, Gail Landers, who did an internship here many years ago, fell away from the church in her teenage years. But at the age of 30, her world was turned upside down and inside out by the sudden suicide death of her father and brother, one right behind the other. 
This left her devastated, lost, empty, broken, and on her knees. She did not know how to begin to pick up the pieces. So she had the good sense to pick up her Bible and knock on the door of the old parish church, St. John's Kingsville. The pastor and the congregation kindly and lovingly opened their arms and their hearts to her. Through the healing power of God's loving community, her pain started to slowly melt away, and her wounds began to heal. Gail's scars became her strength. Faith and practice enables us to give and receive forgiveness, to care about feeding the homeless, to make quilts for the needy, to rehab houses, to take communion through visiting the sick, to help children struggling to learn to read, to provide seafarers with the support they need on our foreign ships, to provide gifts for children at Christmas, praying for everyone on our prayer list. Our faith helps us to enjoy and be involved in fellowship, in caring for each other, teaching Sunday school, helping with worship, ushering, serving on council and vestry, reading lessons and church, singing in the choir, maintaining our building, fixing food for fellowship. This is a faith-driven community, building and spreading the gospel. Oh, Lord our God, you are a nucleus. You are a very breath in and out of our bodies. Thank you. Peace be with you.